Hey Sunday school teachers, welcome to our quick and brief overcap of Sunday school for teacher training. Now normally this would be something in person, I'd feed you, we'd have fun, we'd play a few games, we'd review safe gatherings, etc, etc. But this year, due to COVID and the continued rise in cases and the Delta variant, we're doing a brief, like, six minute intro online. But don't worry, I'm always here if you have questions, comments, concerns, anything like that. All you have to do is shoot me an email or a text. You can set up a time to chat over the phone or in person at the office. Please just let me know what works best for you. A few things to keep in mind. One, if you haven't already, please complete your safe gatherings. This is a requirement by the Missouri Conference of the United Methodist Church. It is also a requirement of the General Conference that all people who work with youth and children complete this training. It takes about two hours online, so not too bad, and you don't have to do it all in one setting. You can do a little bit and come back, do a little bit, come back. Whatever works best for your schedule, just please have it done before August 15th. This way we know that our children are safe and protected here at Campbell. It's also important to note that Campbell completely covers the cost. There is no cost to you, our volunteers, to take this course online. I'm so sorry for any confusion that may have caused in our earlier video, but Campbell completely covers the cost. Now, if you ever plan on helping transport youth or children, please go ahead and also do the vehicle check to make sure that you're approved to drive. Otherwise, let's talk about what Sunday school is going to look like this year. Our youth numbers are a bit lower, so we're going to offer our youth the opportunity to assist in Sunday school, to help lead lessons, to guide, and to help assist our teachers in this space. It's a great opportunity for them to learn leadership skills within the church and to learn more about teaching and guiding. Hopefully, they'll develop skills in godly play and manna and mercy and frolic and more so that they can help continue to be leaders in our church. Now, don't worry, our youth will still have youth time on Sunday evening starting on the 22nd, so don't feel like that they're missing out on anything. It's just sometimes easier to catch them in the evenings. Another thing to remember, because of COVID, and because of safety of our children, we will not be in individual classrooms this year. Now, that is gonna make things feel a little wonky to begin with. We will either be outside by the youth barn or we'll be inside the gym. Now, initially this is gonna be a little hard because the gym is currently being used for the Andy Griffith class. The Andy Griffith class ends at the end of August. So coming September, the gym will be ours for Sunday school as needed unless we're outside enjoying the wonderful weather. If during the month of August, we are unable to be outside by the barn because of weather, our alternative will be inside in the fellowship hall. This is not ideal, but we'll be able to still space out there and still have our lessons. Who knows, maybe even some curious adults will join in. That being said, our youngest in the nursery will be doing the Frolic curriculum from Spark House, which is a great curriculum that focuses on developmentally appropriate stories that begin to build the foundation of faith. Our next oldest group, our pre-K and kindergarten, will begin learning Bible stories and the core basics of godly play. Don't worry teachers, more information is headed your way about how to best insert these practices into your storytelling. Our first through third graders will be doing Godly Play, which is a form of Montessori-based teaching that teaches about Bible stories and the Bible as, as a whole, as well as our Christian faith. In fact, my background behind me is from Godly Play. Our fourth and fifth graders will focus on Manna and Mercy, which is an overview of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. This will help them to see the broader picture of what it means to be in God's story. And it also gives them the chance to color. I'm so excited for Sunday school this year, but as I said, there's also a few extra things to keep in mind. 
those few extra things are one, we will be masking. Everyone, teachers and children, will be required to wear a mask. We won't require it for the nursery, obviously. They're babies. But our older kids who are in Sunday school will be required to wear a mask. We also will require that children not come to Sunday school if they have had a fever within the last 48 hours. This is to make sure that they are not contagious and not spreading any other sicknesses around. Because if we're sick with one thing, we're more likely to get COVID. We will also be sanitizing hands when they come to Sunday school and when they leave Sunday school to make sure that we're getting all the germs off us when we come in and all the germs off us when we go out. Hopefully this will help to reduce any chances of spreading between families or between children and adults. We will also be practicing social distancing to the best of our abilities in our spaces, which is part of the reason why we will not be in classrooms, as some classrooms it's much harder to socially distance in. And last, <laughs> but certainly not least, this Sunday school might involve lots of changes. We don't know what Delta will bring. We don't know what the school year will bring. Should SPS change guidelines, such as masking mandates, we will reevaluate our masking mandates. Should SPS shut down, we will likely take a break from Sunday school and return to online only in order to keep our children safe. I know this is not ideal, but this is COVID. And this is a struggle of keeping our children safe and the struggle of loving them as God would have us love them. Please, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions or concerns. As I said, I'm in the office most days between 9 and 5, and you can simply call me or email me to set up an in-person time to meet. I'm happy to rework my schedule to make something work that works best for you in this time. Please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out. This has covered most of what you need to know for Sunday School this year. As I said, the bulk of what you need to know can be covered in safe gatherings, such as safety procedures and more. We'll make sure that there is a first aid kit around wherever we are doing Sunday School, extra masks for children who might forget, extra masks for adults, and plenty of hand sanitizer, Lysol spray, and other disinfecting products to make sure that we are as safe as possible. This year is a year of grace. Please be graceful to me, to yourself, to your fellow teachers, to the children, as we all struggle to figure out how this year is going to work. Please be flexible with us as we continue to evaluate constantly what is safest and what is best. Thank you for all that you do and for all of your outpouring of love and support for our children and youth. Thanks.